Well, having outlined the historical backdrop, let's now connect the dots using a few brief examples that closely follow the pattern we outline in the dramatic piece that opened this section. The story is a broad one, with a million subtexts and minor characters. But we can grasp the essential plot, and I mean that in every sense of the word, by focusing on a few main players and events. We'll begin with the religion and ritual music of what we'll call shamanism, although it has dozens of different names and permutations based upon culture, continent, and ethnicity. As a musical form, it's identified not so much by its primary emphasis on rhythm as by the use of these rhythms, coupled with repetition and the relative simplicity of the music to induce a form of trance state. Shamanistic music, in turn, purposely uses these states of altered consciousness, often enhanced by the use of drugs, to dissolve inhibitions and tap into primal energies, heightened sensuality, boldness, resistance to physical and psychic pain, and contact with spirits are among the intended byproducts of the performance. Well, using our analogy, any number of modern intellectuals became interested in shamanistic cultures, thinking that they perhaps held a key to enlightenment and human evolution. Aldous Huxley, for example, the renowned British writer and intellectual, explored mystical experiences far and wide, finally experimenting with psychotropic drugs and advocating their use as a tool of enlightenment. His 1954 work, The Doors of Perception, titled from a line by William Blake's Gnostic treatise, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, became a classic of psychedelic literature. A decade later, the book, as well as Blake's writings, became the inspiration for both the name and the spirit behind one of the most influential bands in rock, The Doors. Let's swim to the moon, uh -huh. let's climb to the tide. Keyboardist Ray Manzarek explained, At the time, we had been ingesting a lot of psychedelic chemicals. So the doors of perception were cleansed in our own minds. And we saw the music as a vehicle to, in a sense, become proselytizers of a new religion. A religion of self, of each man as God. That was the original idea behind the doors. And the form of music played by the doors? Well, you can call it rock and roll, but Morrison and the rest of the band understood its primal source, what it would have been called in another time and in another context. I read a little bit about shamanism, you know, what we see uh, with the music and that kind of thing. The shaman, in defining his role in, in society, he's just more interested in um, uh, pursuing his own fantasies. Let's reinvent the gods, all the myths of the ages. Celebrate symbols from deep elder forests. We need great golden copulations. Where did the God of the Bible fit in Morrison's new theology? Petition the Lord with prayer. After deconstructing both Christianity and Western culture, he wonders what should take its place. And what was that new something? Reinvented gods, the ancient ones, the shaman, the wild child, disorder and chaos, a snake who's old and whose skin is cold. Manzarek described the transformation of Morrison, the Lizard King, as these spirit guides came over him in concert. It was a psychological horror, freak show in the sense of the shaman, the sense of possession. 
Morrison was the shaman who took people on a mystical journey to a darker psychic realm. And guitarist Robbie Krieger added his perspective. We were revivalists, he said, as well as musicians and wanted our audience to undergo a religious experience. Well, millions of fans underwent this religious experience, following the Doors and dozens of other psychedelic bands into the mystical new age envisioned earlier by Huxley. The reason for the Doors, the raison d'etre for the Doors, was making music to plug yourself into the vibrations of the planet, harmonize your inner vibration with the vibration of the audience, the human beings, vibrating in harmony together. It becomes, it's, it, it's like a pagan, it's like some sort of a mystical Christ, the, uh, uh, the release of... Uh, Kundalini, the Kundalini power expanding in your body and curling and coiling upwards. Uh, the Aquarian age in which we'll finally begin to merge all the religions and sciences and arts and whatnot and we'll all realize that we are gods. Jim Morrison was a god to himself. I'm a god unto myself. We are all gods unto ourselves. So to put it outside of yourself is a seeking, uh, is, is, is a false messiah. That's a messianic. That's the, the end of 2,000 years of the culture and the religion that we're involved in now. The LSD trip. I salute the God with him. There's a religious pilgrimage. The LSD kick. I salute the goddess within you. It's a religious ecstasy. Following a very similar tack was the grand old man of the psychedelic 60s, Timothy Leary. Psychologist, Harvard professor, and consummate free thinker, Leary coined what may have been the essential mantra of the rock and roll revolution. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. We're turned on, and we're tuned in, and we're very dropped out. Turn on, tune in, and drop out. Turn on tune in and drop out. What I'm saying happens to be the oldest method of human wisdom. Look within, find your own divinity, detach yourself from social and material struggle. Turn on, tune in and drop out. In what may be one of the most telling private conversations in modern history, Leary recalled the first time he took psilocybin with Aldous Huxley. Huxley's eyes were closed, he said. Suddenly, he clapped his hands. Your role is quite simple, Huxley told Leary. Become a cheerleader for evolution. That's what I did and my grandfather before me. These brain drugs will bring about vast changes in society. We must spread the word. Huxley then continued with a chilling addendum. The obstacle to this evolution, Timothy, is the Bible. Leary, like Huxley, spent his life as a cheerleader for evolution, tearing down the foundations of Christendom and erecting in its place a syncretistic blend of Eastern religion, shamanism, and a do-it-yourself, drug-fueled enlightenment. Our Father, who art in cellular heaven within, hallowed be thy name, from whose loins we have sprung and a primary tool for advancing this New Age gospel? You got it, rock and roll. One pill makes you larger. Speaking of the psychedelic bands that dotted the 60s landscape, groups that increasingly embraced his occult views, Leary declared, I rejoice to see our culture being taken over by joyful young messiahs who dispel our fears and charm us back into the pagan dance of harmony. 